Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today's Thursday, and we all know what happens on Thursday. We've got an exciting new update from the Space Engineers developers, and you're probably wondering what you'll be getting your hands on this week, or maybe you're even wondering... What the hell are these things in front of me? Well, these are actually the new block. It's a programmable block, a block that actually uses C Sharp to actually program, and you can actually make your own codes to program numerous features that were almost impossible before. We've got a quick demonstration going over there of some random lights that the developers actually showed, but I'll show you a little bit more of that, and I'll show you where to get the code from to do that yourself as well. And it is a steep learning curve. Luckily enough, I had a little bit of training back in education to do a little bit of coding, but I will tell you I am rubbish. And when you see some of these codes, and if you know coding, you will go, God, this guy does not know what the hell he is talking about. Anyway, let's head over here, and I'll show you one of these first codes. Now, this is as simple as making this piston reverse, something that you could do with a button already, but showing it in code form is quite interesting. I'll also show you the code window. So if we go to edit here, you'll see we've got this basic sort of function. We're going to be making the, the actual piston reverse. So you can see there, we've selected the name reverse, and this is one of the variables in the list to actually do. And then we've actually made the action, so it's going to make that piston, apply that action to the piston. So we've also got check code, so this will check it, make sure it's all compiled successfully and if there is an error it'll tell you then you've got remember and exit so that's going to save this code that you just typed and we've got remember code so this will just save what you just typed without exiting the window and then you've got browse workshop so you can actually see i've got um, random thrusters that'll explain a little bit later when we have a look at that other wall so let's exit that and now we've exited that we can actually press run so running this code will actually retract and reverse this piston. Very simple, something that you could do with a button. And the coding at the moment is quite limited until we know some of the variable names for other items as well. But we've got a large list of every single object, thrusters and so on, so you can do as much as you want. I'll show you some more advanced things as we get over there. Now if we head over here, this is what the developers showed. They showed a number of lights turning on and off randomly and I thought this was a very interesting code having this random sort of ability function you could have this for all sorts of different things quizzes ships maybe even sort of functions of landing bays and turrets having different things popping up at different points to actually test people on shooting ranges and we'll go in and actually have a look at the code so if we head it onto here and we go to the edit function we can actually see we've got quite a simple little code here so we're actually looking for the block so we find the block so my interior light so the interior lights on there, it's searching for all the interior lights on the station, on the pad, and then it's basically setting a random count, turning them on or off, and then it's setting the action here and telling it exactly what to do. So it's actually setting the variable, and then it will employ the number of blocks. So as you can see here, it's going to set up a different variable each time between the maximum number of lights and the minimum number of lights. So we've got one in that case, and then it will randomly put two, then it could go anything between three or four, or it could go randomly back to one. So we've got three on that side. Quite an interesting little bit of coding, something that I wanted to show you. Anyway, let's move on. So the next thing we're going to look at is turning an antenna into a form of message board. Now, say you're running a server and you want people to maybe know the rules, or you want it to present different sort of messages, maybe on some sort of survival mission. You could do this with simple button presses like so. So if I head over to button one and press it, we'll notice that the number changes to one. Now, if I press number two, should change the two number three number three number four and there we go so it's changed all four numbers and it corresponds so if i press number two again it should change to number two and if i press number three it'll change to number three very simple very effective and let's have a look at some of the other things that i've been messing around with so now we're going to have a look at some more advanced systems now we've got a sorting system to the right and a boom box to the left First of all, we're going to have a look at the sorting system. Now, I'm not the best at coding, and this thing has been a lot of problems to actually get to work, and it doesn't work 100% of the time, I will warn you about that. Now, the basic idea is we type a variable into the beacon up above, say, for instance, stone or gold. It then searches these two card containers for that element, and then displays it with a light on and off. So, if it's got it in the container, it'll go green. If it hasn't, it'll go red. Now, it doesn't always work, so fingers crossed it works this time. So we're going to head over to the control panel, and we're actually going to find the antenna block, wherever the antenna block may be. It's there, with no message on. We're going to put in stone, and now stone has been placed on, so we should see that light up in the antenna above. And you can see that we've got a red light in that container, and we've got a green light in this container. So let's actually check that the stone's actually in there. 
and the stone is actually in there. Now let's head back to the console and let's remove the word stone. So if we remove the word stone and now we insert the word gold. So the word gold is now in there and it's got a 50 minute immediate radius just so we can see the actual antenna. So we'll come off that. And now these should have reversed. So gold is in this one by the sounds of it. We've got a green light and it is there. And in this one we have, let me have a quick look. We have the stone still. Yes, we do have the stone. And now if I take it out, the stone actually out, this is where the problems occur. So you can actually see we've nothing's happened. Nothing will change at all. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at the boombox. Now, the question you're probably wondering is if you don't know how to code C Sharp, are you at a distinct disadvantage? Is that person who can code have any more advantage over you in battle, in building, or anything else? Well, as they can actually make a lot of things build a lot faster, still, they're going to have to be at this console programming, working out solutions, and engineering programs. That's quite an interesting and quite an exciting little part of Space Engineers, but at the same time, you can also, if you're not really into this language, you can start to code things and build systems with timer blocks and the other mechanisms that are in game. Now you've all seen that password sort of system that I showed you a few weeks ago, and that is simply using these blocks and a few other blocks and working them out in a certain order, checking variables with the timers themselves, and you've made a complex code without the necessary need for a block like this. So now we're going to actually have a look at the boombox, something that's really simple. And these two buttons over here are programmed really easily just by playing and stopping the actual audio that's coming out of the speakers. This far right one is the little complicated. This is what it's actually going to do. It's going to play the next track. But first of all, I'll show you all the buttons. So we're going to hit the play button, play in the track. Then if we press the stop button, we'll stop the track. And now if we also play the next track button on the far right, we'll play the next track a long there we go. Now you can just hear the music playing. We can stop that. And by doing this, this basically allows us to have a working boombox so we could be working on maybe a set of somewhere. And if we go over, press the play button again, we can actually have some nice music as we're working on our station. Maybe we don't like that track or maybe we've got some custom music on. We could press the hit the next track button and that'll play the next track. And what you've actually noticed here, it's played two tracks over each other, so we'll have to press stop. And we'll play the next track. And there we go. Now we can work away to our beautiful space music in quite ease and calm. Now, the coding on this was quite complicated, and that's why it's still a prototype version at the moment. We're trying to get it so it plays remote control, so I can actually go into my inventory and say I'm working over here. I go, oh, I think I'll change the track, put some on, so put some metal on or something. I can actually change that over, but at the moment, it just works on these few buttons. Nice little simple design. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, I've given you some interesting ideas, and this new patch is going to be rather exciting. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it.